Hey everybody, okay, so let me explain what I am working with here. I, for many years, had a Blue Yeti microphone. Now don't get me wrong, great mic for the price, 100 bucks, can't beat it. I think I got it for like maybe less than that, maybe high 80s at the time. Got some screaming deal at, I think it was at Best Buy or somewhere. I've had it for so long. Um, probably good man, I don't know, eight to 10 years. But anyway, I, um, I wanted to step it up a little bit because one of the things I didn't like about the Blue Yeti was it picks up a lot of surrounding sounds in the room. Uh, it could be even outside of the room. I've got a window to my right that, you know, leaf blowers in, in the morning. Um, I, I'm near a major street, so even traffic Things of that nature would get picked up. Um, dogs barking, um, lawn mowers going, you know that sort of thing. And I wanted something that did a little bit better of a job of isolation. So I did a lot of research. I was looking in the SM7B, and that's a that's a great mic. But 400 bucks is a, a pretty steep climb. I do live live sound as well, and I've got got some really high end mics for live entertainment, but I didn't think I needed to spend that for a studio type podcast and doing like IT instructional videos. So, you know, I, I went back and forth, back and forth. And the only negative that people could say on the, on the, um, the MV seven was that it had issues with plosions, you know, the P's, the S's, the B's, things of that nature. So, I wanted to, I'm using a product called Camtasia that I do most of my instructional videos on. Uh, I could do PowerPoint slides, things of that nature. It's a great product. I did notice I had to max out all my uh, settings to like the, the volumes all the way up. Uh, maybe that's because there's an automatic leveling on right now. I am in automatic mode and using USB, not not uh, XLR. The other reason I bought the uh, MB7 was that it has the ability to use USB if I'm traveling and in a hotel room, and I don't want to carry all this equipment. I don't want to carry my, my Focusrite 2i2 audio interface with me, although I have small cases for it and stuff. It's just convenience more than anything else. So anyway, I'm doing his test on this video. We'll see how it comes out. And I'm just going to, a lot of people are doing the Peter Piper thing. So I'm going to, I'm going to do that a couple of times. And then I'm going to, you know, you can leave your comments below and let me know what you think of this. Um, you think of this mic so far. I know I could put another um, a windscreen on it and I might do that at a later time. Uh, one of my friends recommended maybe even putting a cloth towards the top of the foam or putting a small layer of foam because the area right at the top of the mic is where it's thinnest. So here we go. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. A peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, where's the peck of pickled peppers Peter Piper picked? Man, I haven't done that since I was in grade school. Um, anyway, so there's that. You leave your comments if you think it's, you know, I have a I have a windscreen on my Blue Yeti too. But once again, like I said, the the room noise is my biggest reason for going with the Shure. It's 249, 250, and I'm um, running a basically a kick kick mic uh, stand, which I may look into a an arm boom, a desk mounted arm boom at a later time. But that doesn't, this one doesn't seem to interfere with my uh, movement on my keyboard, things of that nature. And when I'm going to be doing IT instructional videos, a lot of that's going to be using a, um, a Logitech automated slide advancer, that sort of thing. So anyway, let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching.